Hello everyone, welcome to Education for Next Generation. Myself, I am Mrs. Mini Saji. Today I am going to tell you about our 10th class topic that is our environment and our concern. As we all are living organism, we are familiar about our surroundings, what is happening. We know that which are the living components in our surrounding and which are non-living components of our surrounding. We call all the living components as a biotic and non-living components as abiotic component. So all these biotic and abiotic components together they are making our environment. So we can say that environment is that which is the sum of physical, physical and the biological factors and plus you can add it that chemical interaction between the organism is there that whole together makes up our environment. So basically we are classifying our environment with abiotic and biotic components. Now let us have a look on that, the smallest view of that. Suppose we are taking example of a habitat that we know that habitat is a place where that all living organisms can naturally survive and they can reproduce also that non natural place is considered as that habitat. Habitat from that more uh, bigger structure we will go which is the more one we can call it as an ecosystem and more elaborate way we will go means that is that biosphere where we can take it the example of all the living organisms which can survive here. So all living organisms come under here. So let us have a look on that. What are the biotic and abiotic components are there here? Yes, habitat is a place where you can find it some living organisms and some non-living organisms. So living organisms which will make up our this all environment that is we call it as biotic, biotic factors. So biotic factors in that all living organisms come under this like all that plants, animals including that microorganisms. Abiotic component. or factors or you can say components components which are there we can call them as you can take it example of sunlight or light which is a non-living factor and it is essential for living organism to survive water water is not a living but without water any living organism cannot survive air temperature and heat, soil, rocks, whichever we find it uh, which is surrounding to us. These all are make up our abiotic components of our surroundings and these two are required for that all the living organisms to the survive. So it is a Environment is considered as the which is biotic and abiotic factor both should be together in that then such a kind of place you can call it as habitat or more bigger where many habitats are there we call it ecosystem. So many ecosystems where are present we call it biosphere. So biosphere we are considering about that entire planet all the living organisms which are there in that that is comes under that biosphere. Now let us have a look on that how the organisms are interlinked with each other or how that you can find it abiotic and biotic components interaction takes place such as living organisms and between living organisms if their are interaction is there then we will call it we can find it two types of interaction here that one is interspecies interaction second one is called as intraspecies interaction. So interspecies interaction when between the two different species like when interaction is there either for it is for the source of food competition between or resources purpose competition is there or else reproduction purpose competition is there this all comes under that your inter interspecies interaction between two different species of animals or two different species of plants between when there is a competition for survival 
we will call it such interaction as a interspecies interaction intraspecies interaction is also a one that is also happens in that any environment that is intraspecies means the same species between the same species take example of all the herbivorous animals living in a one place all herbivorous animals are only present in a garden or a, in a dairy farm so what will happen all are herbivorous they will eat same type of food they share the same resources everything will, there will be a similarity so there will be a competition for food for shelter and for reproduction or we can say that for mating purpose there will be a competition such competition is when it takes place between the same species of two different organisms between that is called as your intra species interaction suppose in a one place or a one forest you can find it some herbivores are there some carnivorous animals are there and some are scavengers are there so in between these different species of animals when there is a interaction either for food or for resources purpose then we will such interactions are called as interspecies interaction so these interactions we can find it in the living organisms living or not only the living organisms between interaction is there but interaction also takes place between living and non living components in a environment because we are sharing many things in that in environment with that abiotic component also for example take that air without air we living organisms cannot survive that we need air we need oxygen we need water we need sunlight or temperature soil where we are standing rocks or heat these all are the resources is that abiotic components and we can find it interdependency will takes place between abiotic and biotic components also in an environment so these all relationships we are going to see that in how that one animal is depending to other animal and how they are going to develop a food chain and a food web so here we can find it a interspecies interaction simultaneously intraspecies interaction also so let us have a look on that now let us see that interrelationship between that food when any organism is is linked or you can say show a relation for the purpose of food when one organism is depend on the other organism for food then we call it food chain then single one food chain in that we can see that main producers you can find it primary consumers secondary consumers or tertiary consumers in some of the food chain we can see that four levels are there and some of that you can see the fifth also as a topmost carnivore so if food purpose if we see that many animals have interlinked with each other for food purpose so such a single one chain is called as food chain when one organism is depending on other organism for food and there will be a interlink we can see that between that organism such is called such kind of interlinked of the food chain is called as food web now let us have a look on the terrestrial and aquatic aquatic food chain we can see terrestrial as well as aquatic food chain also so here you can see the terrestrial one these are the terrestrial food chain and here you can find it a uh, aquatic food chain just you can find it here that in soil we can see some of them which are as a decomposers usually this is the mushroom or fungus and bacteria are decomposers some of that soil living creatures they are also very good decomposers that and they bring back the nutrients to the soil producers are usually the plants which they will trap the sunlight and they do photosynthetic process and after photosynthetic process they prepare food for themselves simultaneously for the other organisms those are depending on it herbivores are that next level so here we can see herbivores are the such animals those are depending on food for the plants now herbivores after next levels are coming as your primary this the herbivores are considered as that primary consumers and then next level is that your secondary consumers so here they will be primary predators also so they are depending on that herbivorous animals for food so we can call them as that secondary consumers and secondary consumers on the top we can find it the tertiary consumer which is the secondary predator also and it is the more powerful one so here in this pyramid structure we can see that producers are more in number then you can find more less number 
of herbivore more or less number is that secondary consumer or primary predators we call them and then you can find the topmost will be the very much narrow which is that secondary predator or tertiary consumer so here you can see it this one is making it like a pyramid structure here that now when you can find it are aquatic and this one terrestrial you can find it many type of interaction in between the animals or many type of food chains we can see that in terrestrial one plants they are small that insects that is you can say crickets or grasshoppers or other insects those are depending on plants they are the you can see that these are the primary primary consumers from that those will eat this one like beetles and other ants which are that comes under secondary one then again you can see the next chain in that frogs are there frogs will feed on this all insects then snakes are there snakes will feed on frogs and again eagle or hawk you can see they will feed on that snake so this is the one chain of that food chain it is a terrestrial one second one you can see it in the aquatic one where that you can find it phytoplanktons these are the phytoplanktons phytoplanktons are eaten by that your zooplanktons zooplanktons are eaten by the small fishes crabs shrimps and all so these are that again the next level of that and these are small fishes were eaten up by that more bigger fishes and then it may be eaten by the dolphins or sharks that and sharks will be the considered as the topmost here so every food chain you can find it a one topmost carnivore one when these are interlinked to each other when you can see that all these are interlinked to each other they will make a food web so here you can see that the plants are eaten by many organisms like here that this is that deers or you can reindeers or you can see here is that this is the one who will also eat the plant this is rabbits and insects which are there some of that insects also depends on the plant and mouse also sometime feed on the plant so one when one organism is a main food for different organisms then they will create a interlinked and inter network between each other and that is becoming a food web so here this herbivores which are there they are eaten up by the again that next level carnivorous animals and that may be a fox or rabbit also eaten by this mouse also eaten by this so these all are coming to the next level which is secondary consumers will be and topmost will be that your tertiary consumers or top carnivores will be in the top level it will higher that so these all are eaten up by this one so these two are you can find it here these two are that which are the topmost that is carnivore here which is the one chain from here and this is also are interlinked to this so these two are animals are here in this flow chart they are the topmost carnivores so here we can see that one level to another level another level when that animals go so you can find it as if here that is a like a pyramid shape we will get it so here you can see the relationship will be such a way you can find it a pyramid form in that food chain also when that it is interlinked and it is made that so topmost carnivore will be on the top and which will be very